The DJI Air 3 has finally landed, and we are gonna test to see how good this drone really is and how to get the most out of this beast of a flying machine. Ready? Play tape. So it's been a little over two years since this little guy's predecessor, the Air 2S, came to market. I purchased one and it was one of the best investments I ever made into my videography equipment. Incredible performance from a mid-level consumer drone with pro features and stunning video capture. And I thought this drone couldn't be beaten for the price or improved upon in terms of video quality and functionality. Well, it turns out the Air 3 pretty much outclasses the Air 2S in every way. Here's why. Now this is not a comparison video, but I just wanted to address some of the key improvements on the Air 3 before we go into a deep dive on this thing. Battery life, an incredible 46 minutes flight time. That's 48% longer than the Air 2S. Eh? Maximum flight speed is increased from 42 miles per hour to 47 miles per hour. And these two combined equate to a maximum flight distance of, wait for it, 32 kilometers. No, that's a major improvement from the 18.5 kilometers on the Air 2S. Also, the maximum ascent and descent speed is increased from six meters per second to 10 meters per second. Wind resistance, 10.7, to 12 meters per second. The obstacle avoidance system has now improved to the omnidirectional sensing using a pair of fisheye lenses to the front and to the rear with binocular and infrared sensing underneath. That means the Air 3 is completely covered all the way around and you don't have to worry about flying into the side of something like the Air 2S. Another upgrade is the transmission distance. Using the new RC2 controller with the drone, we can achieve distances up to 20 kilometers. Although, side note, 20 kilometers is for non-return home one-way flights. Remember, the range is 32 kilometers, so just pay attention to your return home reminders or you'll conk out a battery. Night mode is another new feature on the Air 3, which the Air 2S didn't have. More on that later, but we're getting into the business end of the upgrades. My favorite, the camera system. The biggest selling point on the Air 3 is the dual camera system, hence the tagline, double up. This is a major improvement over the Air 2S and a feature until now only seen on the higher end Mavic lineup. We have the 24 millimeter camera on the bottom and the 70 millimeter telephoto lens on the top. Both cameras are capable of virtually the same specs, which are pretty darn impressive. They both have a 48 megapixel sensor with fixed apertures of f1.7 and f2.8 respectively. They both shoot up to 100 frames per second in 4K. Yes, that's both cameras. Bless the Air 2S only had one and can only manage 60 frames per second in 4K. Stills photography, you can shoot in either JPEG or RAW in 12 megapixels or 48 megapixels, and that's both on the wide and the medium telephoto lens. Pretty impressive. But how does this all work in the real world? Let's find out. Now to use the dual camera system on the RC controller next to the video mode, we have a 1X, which is your wide angle camera, or a 3X, which accesses your medium telephoto lens. This is a major advantage for content creators like myself. Being able to swap seamlessly between these focal lengths gives us a lot more creative possibilities for B-roll and cinematic footage. Those classic wide angle shots using the 24 millimeter lens, but the 70 millimeter to compress the background and achieve those gorgeous parallax effects. Both are capable of shooting H.264 and 265. Having that reach and compressed focal length without having to physically fly the drone closer could mean the difference between getting the shot and not. The medium tele lens is three times the focal length of the wide angle lens and it means you can get talking head style shots like this without flying the drone up in your face. This will be something new and exciting for those of you trading up from the Air 2S. So one of the ways we can get really dynamic shots is by using what's called active track and you can access that by drawing a square around your subject matter, either a person or in this case a car, and it will give you this list at the bottom. And let's choose active track. And this brings up the follow compass. I'll choose to follow from behind. Let's hit the road, baby. 
and the drone follows like a well-trained puppy, even at 40 odd miles per hour. So let's try following the car with the medium telephoto lens on a three quarters angle like they do in Top Gear. Really solid active tracking, even using that intelligent obstacle avoidance system. And then of course we have Spotlight, which will grab onto a subject and follow you around wherever you wanna go. Even with inputs from the RC controller's joysticks. Point of interest will fly a circle around an object while keeping it central in the frame at whatever speed you like. Features on the DJI drones that we've come to know and love are quick shots and master shots, which enables us to create dynamic content automatically without having to touch the controller. You can access these by clicking menu and master shots. So if you don't care for video editing or find color grading intimidating and you just want to shoot for fun, then the normal color profile is probably your best bet for capturing footage like this. Another profile that the Air 3 offers you is the HLG profile, which gives you a bit more contrast, but is more forgiving in terms of saving your shadows and your highlights. I actually shoot HLG on my Sony camera. However, the 10-bit D-Log M color mode is my preferred choice when it comes to color grading. It will give you the widest possible dynamic and tonal range to work with during the editing process. And the results will give you some pretty cinematic footage. Because both lenses have a fixed aperture of f1.7 and f2.8 respectively, you're probably going to want to take advantage of the ND filter pack which DJI supply on the website or as part of the Fly More combo. Now in a nutshell, because of what's called the 180 degree rule in videography, you always want to try and keep your shutter at double the frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, then an ND filter allows you to bring the shutter as close as possible to 60th of a second without overexposing exposing the footage. Now choosing the correct ND filter can be tricky depending on your shooting conditions, but I'll flick up a chart on the screen which will help in your decision. The pack comes with ND 8, 16, 32 and 64. However, whenever I shoot stills photography on the Air 3, or any drone for that matter, I always take the ND filter off because I want the shutter as fast as possible to reduce any kind of motion blur or camera shake. The faster the shutter, the crispier those images will be. and the 48 megapixel sensor gives us sharp, high resolution images. So I've got a lovely composition here with this leading line and the road and the sun's coming in. So I'm gonna go and get in the frame to give it some scale and that nice shadow on the floor. And I'll take a bracketed shot of three images. So here we go. Using exposure bracketing ensures you get a perfectly exposed shot to choose from out of the three or five images taken. More creative options we have on offer is hyperlapse. And if we choose waypoint, this allows us to set your starting point manually. So let's get into a good position. There looks good. Then we can set our end point. I have an interval of three seconds between frames, and let's go for a time-lapse duration of five seconds. And the drone takes 125 raw images along the path I set. Once they are compiled as a time-lapse in your video editing software, we end up with cinematic shots like these. So if you're shooting twilight or later into the evenings, you're going to want to take advantage of the upgraded night video mode, which provides better noise reduction and cleaner footage. You can access this through the RC controller within the video menu and submenu night. You'll be pleased to know that both the wide and telephoto lenses both support night shooting mode in 4K up to 30 frames per second. The new RC2 controller has also been upgraded and you'll notice we've gone back to using fold-out antenna giving us a total of six. And this is a significant improvement in video transmission and connection between the drone and the controller. 
It uses three different gigahertz bands, and not only that, it can choose the best one for you automatically. It still transmits 1080p at 60 frames per second in live view, and the extra antenna give us that whopping 20 kilometers uninterrupted, unobstructed connection. That's five kilometers more than the old RC controller, and it has 32 gigabytes internal storage expandable using the micro SD card slot. And if you're interested to know how I'm able to record screen captures, I'll show you how to do that. So if we drag down from the top, you'll notice we have a screen similar to a smartphone and this little button here that says record screen. And this little symbol down here tells us we're recording and we can also move that around so it doesn't get in the way. And that's how you're able to record anything that's happening on the screen. Really useful for logging your settings while you're filming. Here's a brand new feature on the battery charging hub, which comes as part of the Flymore combo. When there is no external power to charge the batteries, you can long press the power button on the side to trigger what's called power accumulation. This transfers the remaining juice from the batteries with the lowest power into the battery with the most remaining power. How neat is that? So there you have it guys, the DJI Air 3 has finally landed. Do you know what? It is quite a bit bigger than the Air 2S. Look at that. And the batteries, that explains the flight time. I'll tell you what, it does give the Mavic 3 Pro a run for its money. If you're thinking about buying one, you're not gonna be disappointed. Anyway, that's it guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I've got a headshot photography course available. I'll pop links in the description below. And of course, I've got my Lightroom preset pack. I'll catch you next time.